Hi, my name is Dr. LaShawna Dean. I'm an assistant professor at William Patterson University. I'm a licensed professional counselor, approved clinical supervisor, and nationally certified counselor here in New Jersey. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about some of your fears and concerns about participating in clinical research trials. What you'll see on the upcoming slides are the most popular questions that we've gotten about participating in a clinical trial. But there will also be an opportunity for more questions during the live question and answer session at the end. I know when African Americans hear the words clinical trial, the first thing they think about is the Tuskegee experiment, as well as what happened to Henrietta Lacks in which her cells were used to further ovarian cancer cell research without her knowledge. Uh, that no longer can happen to us anymore. There are many safeguards built into the research process that protect us from those things happening to us again. In today's research, we use the informed consent process. Uh, this is a process in which a doctor clearly lays out for you in written and also verbally what you will have happen to you in the, in the clinical trial. So they give you a document that explains possible side effects, that explains the process you will go through, that explains all the checkups, all the lab reports, and everything that might happen to you during the process of the trial. And this is really for your protection, because if anything goes differently from that informed consent process, you have a way to check in and call someone and report that. Uh, one of the good things about the informed consent process is this is your opportunity to ask any question that you may have. And one of the things that I tell many African Americans as well as anyone else participating in any research is that you are your best advocate. You're the one who has to come prepared with the questions. Um, you can Google things, look them up, see if this will happen to you. You can ask any questions. The good thing about the informed consent process is that this is, doesn't just happen at the beginning of research. You can ask questions at any point throughout your clinical trial. At the bottom of the informed consent document, there's usually a complaint procedure. In that procedure, it lists how you can complain as well as who you can contact if you should have any complaints about the trial. And that person is different from your doctor intentionally so that if you don't feel comfortable telling your doctor about something, you have an outside party that is objective and will listen to your concerns. This is an outside body that checks on all of the procedures and processes that are happening in your trial. Uh, this is a group of individuals that will look at every word, how everything is explained, and every policy is laid out to you to make sure that it's clear. For example, any time that I've done clinical research, if I change just one word, I get a call from them and they say, uh, this was not the word you said you were gonna use. So I say that just to say that you should be reassured that not only are your doctors making sure to follow the policies and procedures correctly, there's also an outside group that's doing the same. The last thing your doctors want is for them to make a mistake in how they explain things, things to you which actually derails a whole trial. And it may, you know, actually mess up their research. So I'm sure that they're gonna follow all the policies and procedures to the T. There are possible side effects with everything that we do in life. If you go to the pharmacist tomorrow and pick up a new prescription, they will inform you of the various side effects that you may feel or endure as a part of taking that new medication. So I'm not gonna promise you that there won't be any side effects, but what I will promise you is that if those side effects outweigh the benefits of your personal health, the doctor will stop the trial. The number one goal of the doctor is to do no harm. So if the risks outweigh the benefits of your clinical trial, they will stop it and discuss that with you, how you're gonna move forward or if you're gonna move forward. All of that will be discussed with you. So with any clinical trial, there are things that will be discovered as a part of the trial as it proceeds, as it goes forward. So as those things come up, your job will be to inform the doctor of any new side effects you notice, any new problems that you might be experiencing. And that's where the doctor will stop and have a good conversation with you about proceeding. One of the things that we learned from the past about research is that we need to make sure that the client or the participant is comfortable. So the last thing that we will do is just keep going on in the clinical trial just to see what's gonna happen to you. We definitely won't go forward if it's causing you more harm and, and doing you no good at all. I myself have gone through a clinical trial with my mother when she had cancer. Um, it was pretty late in her cancer diagnosis. There had been many treatments tried and failed. Uh, my mother had something known as triple negative breast cancer, which is really resistant to different types of chemotherapy. With that being the problem, any new thing we tried just didn't work. 
Uh, we knew that we had to try something different. So there were many, many clinical trials going on at that time. And we didn't know if we were gonna get the placebo group, which is just um, no, no treatment at all, or if we were gonna get the actual drug. But we wanted to try one, any way we could to extend her life. Luckily, we got the, the actual drug, the actual treatment, and it did help extend my mother's life. It helped her feel better um, during the last portion of her life, and it helped them learn more about triple negative breast cancer. And I feel really good about that. Although my mother didn't survive her breast cancer, I know that other women with tri triple negative breast cancer have benefited from the research that they learned during that clinical trial. I'm not sure if you know, but triple negative breast cancer is really common in African American women. So as an African American woman, I felt it was my job and, and my mother's job to really participate in this research and make sure that they know how to treat us. Because uh, the one thing that I do know is that other groups show up when clinical trials happen, they show out, they participate in everything they can get. One thing that I didn't mention earlier about clinical trials is that not only do you get the possible drug, but you get the very best treatment during that time. Your doctor's watching you continuously. They're checking your lab reports. They even called home. Anytime anything went wrong, we went straight to the emergency room and there was someone on the doctor's staff who knew my mother's case and would treat her from a very uh, specific and specialized viewpoint of her being within that clinical trial. So during those few months that she was on the clinical trial, she really got the very best care There is usually a principal researcher who will have all of the information about the clinical trial, who will explain it to you carefully, and they will make sure that you understand the whole process laid before you. One thing I wanna reassure you is that even if you don't get the actual drug during the trial and you're in the placebo group, you will still get the best clinical treatment out there available to you. They still have to monitor you carefully. They still have to make sure you're comfortable. They still will make sure that they are monitoring any crises that you might have. Many people have the fear that what will happen if things get worse? What if I don't get any better? Well, there are usually two ways that we can go about handling this. Uh, the first thing is talk to your doctor if you feel things are getting worse. They're gonna take you out of the clinical trial if it actually is getting worse and that you're not getting any benefit from the trial. The other thing is the fears that we have around our health crises. Uh, we have so many fears around that and that is a normal part of any process of dealing with health issues. If this happens and those feelings start to get really overwhelming, I would encourage you to go see someone like me, a counselor or a social worker uh, that's assigned to the hospital, or you can go for an outside provider, but that person is gonna help you find ways to cope with those feelings. One of the, the greatest fears that we have is what will happen if my health gets worse, and that's a real fear. Uh, so I would encourage you to talk to someone about that and get those feelings out, not keeping them bottled up inside. Usually, as a part of any clinical trial, they have a social worker on staff who will help you and guide you through those questions, through those fears, and through those worries. Another thing that I would implore you to do is really think about how will this trial not only just benefit me, but how will it benefit the African American community as a whole? Um, one of the things that really concerns me as a clinical researcher is lack of participation. A lot of us don't want to participate because Personally, we, we're like, it, we don't want it to get any worse. Or personally, we don't want to take the time. But I would really encourage you to think about how can I help my community as a whole? That's one of the things I love about being black is that we do care about our community. And this is a way to show how our community that you care about sickle cell disease. So don't just consider the personal implications of participating in a clinical trial. Think about the larger goal. How will this further the research around sickle cell in the African American community? There are certain diseases that we as African Americans struggle with more than other groups, and sickle cell disease is one of those. So I would encourage you to think about the larger good. Oftentimes, we need a cocktail of drugs at varying dosages just to get the treatment that works for us. Unfortunately, not every drug is gonna work for everyone. But one thing that we will get from your participation in a clinical trial is to learn more about what works for you as well as others like you. The good thing about participating in a clinical trial is not only do we learn about you personally as a patient, but we also learn information about other African Americans as they participate in this clinical trial. 
Every clinical trial is different and they vary on what they label compensation. Uh, compensation usually comes in the form of the very best treatment. So your doctors will run more lab tests on you, will be with you when you're in crisis more often, will make sure that they watch you and monitor you out of your mind. If it somehow relates to your participation in the clinical trial, then usually the people who run the clinical trials wanna make sure that you're comfortable and will try to accommodate you in those needs. But one of the other things that isn't mentioned anywhere is really paying it forward. I know I keep coming back to this, but I can't explain to you enough how important it is to pay it forward for other African Americans struggling with this disease. We are one of the few groups that suffer from this disease, yet we're the ones who don't wanna participate in the clinical trial. Those two things just don't go together. One of the things that you may consider as you move forward in making the decision to participate in this trial is how will I benefit others through my participation? Most trials do go on for an extended amount of time to accommodate those who are participating in the trial. And usually the leaders of the clinical trial and or the doctors will ask for an extension just to make sure everyone in the trial can continue to get the treatment that they need. In worst case scenario, clinical trials are ended for lack of participation. And this just drills it home for me why we need to continue participating in clinical trials so that the trials aren't ended when people are still benefiting from them. So lack of participation is a really big issue right now. There are some geographical areas in which we lag behind in African-American participation in clinical research trials. Uh, there are other reasons also that take people away from participating in a clinical trial. Skepticism, um, a lack of communication, a lack of information. It may be a, a myriad of reasons as to why people may not participate in a clinical trial. But this is why we're bringing this information to you right now, just to get you informed that there are clinical trials out there for you to participate in. So one of the myths that are in African-American families and African-American communities is to keep what happens in your household private, uh, to keep things within the family or just within your small communities. But I, that couldn't be more from the truth when it comes to clinical trials. Everything is important in a clinical trial, from what you ate for breakfast to how many sexual partners you might have had. This all could affect the way that the clinical trial data comes back. This extra information is what is called confounding variables. These are things that could interfere with the actual treatment, the actual new experimental drug that they're trying out. That's why your doctor will ask you a lot of personal questions. And while I know that answering personal questions are, is very uncomfortable, everything you can give and every honest answer you contribute will definitely help them learn more about the way that this treatment is affecting you and others like you. As a professional counselor, holism is really important to the way that we treat our clients. So holism just means that we integrate every part of you. So there's our spiritual self, uh, there's our emotional self, there's our physical self. In order for your physical health to be really where it should be, you need all of those areas in line. So I'll never say to you, don't pray about it, or don't consult, go to your pastor about questions regarding your health or prayer, because that helps, everything helps. But another thing that helps is talking about your feelings, getting those feelings out. I think, especially African-American women and men, we feel that we have to be strong and we have to keep it all inside and we can't show any weaknesses. But this can't be further from the truth. And in fact, it may hurt your actual treatment if you keep things bottled inside. So a professional counselor is there to be a third party objective listener to really help you just process through your feelings. We are non-judgmental. We listen to you. We don't lead you or guide you towards how to feel. We just let you move there organically. And one of the things that really helps is just talking it out. And that's what we're here for. Being a part of a clinical trial is one thing, but being a person who suffers from sickle cell disease is a whole nother thing that has its own set of emotions uh, attached to that. And that's what we're here for. Really here to help you process through those feelings. And lastly, I'll just give you my own personal anecdote. My grandmother always said, God don't want you to be no fool. So what I took that as to mean is really talk it out, process things, and don't be stubborn.